So Crossover 23.6 has just had a big surprise release. And I say this is surprising because Crossover 23.5 only came out a couple of weeks ago and it had some pretty big updates, including the integration of Apple's game porting toolkit, which now enables the ability to play many DirectX 11 and 12 Windows games on the Mac. And what's interesting about this release is that Code Weavers, the makers of Crossover, are targeting Counter-Strike 2 performance. So if you didn't already know, CSGO used to run on a Mac, but its sequel Counter-Strike 2 no longer has a Mac port, it's been officially cancelled. This is despite the fact that Valve had a working Mac port up until just a few days ago, but it looks like Mac support has been removed officially by Valve forever. However, it's been possible to play this game using Crossover, and Codeweavers have been hard at work integrating new patches and fixes to make this game work better, even on Apple Silicon Macs. However, you can tell that this is quite a hasty update. Crossover 23.6 still integrates Game Porting Toolkit 0.4, even though the 1.0 release only happened a few days ago. However, CX Patcher, a third-party patching tool, now enables Game Porting Toolkit 1.0 to be integrated with this new release of Crossover. We also have a new performance enhancement mode called M-Sync, which is an alternative to E-Sync. And this combined with DXVK asynchronous shader compilation, plus a fix for the audio crackling issue, means that this version of CX Patcher and Crossover 23.6 is going to be the best possible way to play Counter-Strike 2 on a Mac right now. So in this video today, I'm going to show you the entire process from start to finish on how to get Counter-Strike 2 working best on the Apple Silicon Mac using Crossover CX Patcher and enabling all of these performance enhancement fixes. So the first thing I'm going to do is to click on the link at the top of the description for my affiliate link for Crossover. If you click the link and make a purchase, then I'll make a small commission and you'll be helping to support this channel and the content that I create. So once you've clicked on the link in the description, we'll be taken to the store page or you can go to codeweavers.com and click on buy now. I do recommend making a purchase of which comes with 12 months support. If you want to get a discount, then make sure to use the promo code Apple Gaming Wiki New and just apply here, and then you're going to get a 20% discount. And anyway, once already, you can click the buy now button and then you can go ahead and fill out your details. Alternatively, if you want to try this out, you can also go to the Code Weavers website, click the try now button, then you can fill out these details and get a fully featured 14 day free trial, which is going to download the latest version of Crossover 23.6. So next, we just go to our downloads folder, double click on 23.6 to extract the application. And then we're gonna drag and drop this into our applications folder. And then within applications, we'll just scroll down until we find crossover and then just go ahead and double click on this, press open. And instead of installing Steam like we would normally, what we're gonna do is actually use the Counter-Strike 2 cross tie. So do a search here for Counter-Strike 2, and then you're gonna find this cross tie here. So click on this. And basically what this is gonna do is to install Counter-Strike 2 into a new Windows 10 64-bit bottle. It's gonna do this via Steam, but it's gonna incorporate several of the fixes, which is going to make Counter-Strike 2 run a lot better on Apple Silicon Max. So just go ahead and press install here. It's saying it's creating the bottle. Here we've got these standard pop-ups that come up when you install Steam. It's just installing the fonts in the background. And then we're going to go through the standard Steam setup. So just go ahead and install this in a default location and then run Steam. Here we're downloading a 300 megabyte file. And we're going to go ahead and sign in with our Steam account or scan the QR code with your mobile app. So here we're logging into Steam. It's automatically popped up an install window for Counter-Strike 2. So go ahead and install install this either in its default location, or if you've installed Counter-Strike 2 already in a different bottle or in a different location, you can just click Add Drive here and then choose another location. And then you can often find it within your computer. Or if you're looking at removal drives, you can find them under the volume section here. So I'm just attaching this to my Steam Windows library on my NAS. Now I can see all of my games installed here. So we're gonna be running this via DXVK. We're not gonna have eSync turned on because the blog post doesn't specify that specifically. However, later in the video, I'm gonna show you how to turn on an experimental feature called M-Sync. But anyway, if you don't want to do that, you can just run this as it is. And now what we're going to do is to launch Counter-Strike 2 using DXVK with Crossover 23.6. It's saying checking configuration, and now it's saying running install script, let that run. If you had an issue like I did, what you can do is just manually install DirectX into the bottle. Just go to Crossover, then click Install, and then select DirectX for modern games, and then install this into the Counter-Strike 2 bottle. First time you run this, it's going to take about five minutes for this to properly boot up. So you'd have to be a little bit patient. The screen's going to be kind of black, and then I'll go to the orange title screen and then it's gonna take a bit of time for the actual files to load correctly. So just be patient, it's all gonna load up slowly. So finally we are in the game and 
you can see that all of the stuff is working correctly. And what you probably want to do is to let all of the shaders cache. It's going to be quite stuttery to begin with. What I do recommend doing is going through the kind of bot training session so that you can reduce the amount of stuttering that you get. However, you can skip this as well, especially if you've done this before. Just go to settings menu here. Make sure the enable developer console mode is turned on. Press the console here by pressing this button. Might be different on your keyboard. Then want to type in SV cheats one and then mp max rounds one and then mp restart game one and that's going to make our training match a little bit shorter so here we're going to press play and do the training day so as you can see it's still very stuttery at the beginning but we're going to play around just see how this goes so movement is not great at the moment but it's going to improve a lot once we play a bit more the shaders all being cached you can just go ahead and open up the console and type in bot kill and then that's going to win you the round and then you're going to be able to play the multiplayer straight away. So if you want to improve Counter-Strike 2 even more, there is actually a version of CX Patcher, which is going to patch this up to game porting to get 1.0. And it's going to add a few options, it's going to upgrade Molten VK. And we have a new option to enable something called M-Sync. So I'm just going to show you how to do that now. So just remember, this is not sanctioned by Code Weavers. This is a third party patch. If you do make use of this patch, make sure not to contact the Code Weaver support and definitely do not get a refund because this comes at your own risk. So basically we're going to shut down Steam and shut down Crossover as well. Then I'm going to leave a link in the description for the latest version of CX Patcher. So we're going to release this here and then we scroll down. We're going to find 0.4.2, which is compatible now with Crossover 23.6. So remember, this is an experimental build, hasn't really been tested much. So this really comes at your own risk. What we're going to do is to download this version by scrolling down here and then opening up assets and getting CX Patcher. We're going to download this now. And then under downloads, make sure that we allow this to continue downloading because it's an unknown file. Then we're going to go ahead and double click on CX Patcher in our downloads folder, then move this over to applications. So you're going to control click on CX Patcher and then press open and then press open again to manually open it. Then we need to type in, I will not ask code weavers for support or refund because this comes at your own risk. Press agree and proceed. And what I like to do here is to rename my original crossover. I'm going to call this one 23.6 and I'm going to make a copy of this. This is optional as well. Then we're going to call this one crossover 23.6 CX Patcher. And we're going to drag and drop this over to CX Patcher. We're not going to use separate bottle paths because I don't want to have to go through that setup again. We want to allow repatch and upgrade and integrate game porting toolkit 1.0. So I'm just going to patch this now. Continue. So now that crossover is patched, we can now enable a couple of performance settings which are going to really help with stuttering. So just go into crossover, control click on the bottle and then open C drive. Make sure the path bar is enabled so you can go up a folder and then we're going to control click and open the cxbottle.conf with text edit. Then at the bottom under environmental variables, we're going to add these two lines. Wine msync equals one and dxvk async equals one. So I'll leave these in the description. This is going to enable msync, which is going to improve performance. And this is going to enable asynchronous shader caching. So that's going to help with all the stuttering too. So make sure all of those are turned on. And then we're going to reload crossover. And here we're going to relaunch Steam. Just make sure dxvk is turned on and async is turned off. Double click and then let's go. So you can see in the top left that dxvk is running async. So hopefully this is going to reduce stuttering. So here running the game basically at medium to low settings at 1080p with fidelity super resolution set to quality mode. There are a few graphical issues with DXVK. You can see, for example, some flickering here, but it doesn't really affect gameplay that much. Also, if you're experiencing audio crackling, what you can do is go to spotlight and change your MIDI audio device settings. So if you have an audio device, for example, your Mac speakers, you should change this from 48,000 hertz to 96,000 hertz, and that should fix that issue. So the main thing to note is that this game actually performs a lot better on 23.7 with these performance enhancement fixes. However, you're still going to get stuttering at the beginning of matches, but once you've basically played a level once and used all of the weapons or cached all of the animations and shaders, it's going to be a relatively smooth experience. Now, of course, not everything is perfect. We've got flickering issues. People are saying that there are micro stutters and you wouldn't necessarily want to play this as a fully competitive game. There's still a ways to go before this is absolutely perfect. But because of the sheer numbers of people who want to play CS2, on a Mac. I'm pretty confident that Code Weavers and the open source hacking community are going to figure out all of these later issues and it's really just a matter of time. Anyway, I hope you found this video useful. Big thanks to the CX Patcher team, Marzent for the development of msync and of course Code Weavers who make crossover. Anyway, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.